déjà. Eaton versus Geiger. Welcome back, Forts fans, to yet again another 1v1 ranked commentary here on Synergy Gaming TV. We've got an even bigger treat for you this time than we did last time. We have the number one ranked Forts player currently, right now, on the left-hand side. It's Eaton playing Pinch Fist. And on the right-hand side, his opponent, the number one loved fan right now in the German community, it's Geiger, also playing Pinch Fist. So, as you guys know, on ledge grab, you don't technically need early turbines. I like this lack of resources. One pivot point, get everything to balance uh, turbine play here. We know that you don't need turbines right off the bat. Uh, obviously, unless you have a certain game plan, something in here. These guys have practiced and experimented these plans quite a bit. So, uh, because of the two cores and the energy generation, you typically don't need to have turbines like this. Uh, but we're going to see what the plan is here. You can see here on the right-hand side, Geiger going for his technology, put down right away. Now, he's leaving a space here. It looks goofy like this. He's doing this on purpose. He's leaving a space because this base tends to wiggle and jiggle quite a bit. Fitting this technology right in against the wall basically causes it to explode. This is a much safer play. He can delete this when he's done, get his cannons out nice and quick. There it is, already being deleted. And now we can use this wall space for things like storages and stuff like that. So, trying to get a couple planks here. Eaton uh, just working away on his... Uh, on his opponent's mine, chilling. We got five mines and four mines. So you can see here that uh, Eaton's going to be coming out a little bit ahead, <laughs> telling him to heck off. That's uh, that's quite funny, quite funny. Stop with the harassment. We're going to have laser tech versus cannon tech. Now you can see how quickly uh, Geiger was able to get out his technology. We're halfway through the munitions plant already, and you can see here that we're uh, not even a quarter of the way through the factory yet. So there is going to be a substantial difference in the technology and how quickly they're deployed. Uh, this is a very common strategy for Geiger. We've seen this a little bit before from him and other players as well. Uh, building the heavy stuff over top of the ground so you get uh, stronger foundations. It's just stronger structurally and makes uh, a lot more sense to build them back here. Because of where the bases are located, you don't need it right here in the front. Uh, however, Keep in mind, when you see your opponent building something like this, this is a weak spot right here on the top of the base. So using weapons like cannons or howies at arc uh, can be pretty huge. And early EMPs coming out of Eaton, getting that harass here. Geiger giving a little bit of a uh-oh, trying to get the repairing done on his sniper, but it is currently taken out. Now, EMPs disabling the core right off the bat. That is, uh, that's rough. That is rough. Sniper trying to get a little bit of play in here. Uh, oh man, he got robbed there. Sniper shot hits the EMP rocket and misses the actual EMP launcher. Disappointing. Uh, hiding the turbines back here. I like that from Eaton. Getting a little bit more wood spam here. Geiger mm, chilling. He's not, uh, he's not super panicked, super worried. Technology's already done here. He's losing a little bit of the resource generation created by the core, but overall, not a big concern at the specific moment. Now, this is something we've seen Eaton do before, the dual sniper technique. I like the disabling of the dual cores with these EMPs. Now we're starting to create a little bit of havoc here. Not a good situation. The dual sniper coming out of uh, Eaton, uh, very, very powerful. We've seen it quite uh, a lot. Now, constant EMP harassment while he's waiting for the lasers to finish. That's FA key here. We can see here we're coming up to four minutes or three minutes and 50 seconds. And we got a Howie coming in here. So this is one of the things that I like uh, when you're going uh, with cannons. And I, I much prefer cannons and uh, howitzers on this map because of how bases are typically built. This is a very weak spot in the bases. So being able to drop rounds down in here is typically uh, typically a very good strategy. That doesn't always happen, but you can see in these maps it's going to be uh, very, very strong. EMP's coming across here. Geiger just being completely harassed here. Having a hard time keeping a sniper alive. Um, and now we're back into the chill mode. Gets another shot there. Snipes the EMP out of the air. And he manages to get the door closed. Eaton's got his top sniper homed in on that door. And we got a gunner chilling in the door. He's got both snipers taken in. Now you can see here too what Eaton has done. 
Another great EMP shot. Another great EMP shot. He's got a sniper low and a sniper high. You'll typically see players at slightly lower ranks group their snipers together. He has them done. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What a howie shot! Hits the weak spot in the base, breaks the, uh, the the bracing here, and he loses, what was that, a plasma and two fire beams? A plasma and two fire beams. That's uh, 1,800 metal down the drain. That is rough. That is rough, potatoes. Uh, typically, Geiger goes cannon, so it's really nice to see a Howie in this match. Uh, definitely, definitely like that. So he wasn't really focusing too much. Wasn't focusing too much on protecting himself. He was focusing on uh, just kind of stalling out until that Howie came out. He knows that there wasn't any gunners, and he was able to drop out one of those Howie shots absolutely spectacularly. Great here. Uh, Geiger using his gunners, firing here. And I don't see a comeback here for Eaton. I'm thinking this is going to be a bit of a rough one. Geiger managed to flip the control on this map pretty quick. There's a bro coming out. And uh, manages to tank that relatively well. No gunners seem to be in operation currently at the moment. And weapons. Gunners just firing. That's a lot of resources. 75, 150, what, 300? Uh, 375 metal down the drain. Did I math that right? 150, 50, 300. Yeah, I did. There's some more there. Another 150. That's a lie. 300 metal down the drain. Uh, or not down the drain, but expended on gunners. Firing those gunners back. We got some fire beams coming in here. Sold off the EMPs, getting the fire beams. I'd like to see that. And, uh, oh man, Geiger just not having any of it. Sticking on four mines, and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep making weapons. There's nothing you can do. And, uh, this is gonna be... This is going to be gnarly. Seven minutes in, Sniper's putting in some serious work. We got the fire beam coming in low. We're going to light some of those batteries on fire. And there it is! Oh, he gets the batteries. One core is still there. One core is still there. One core is still there. Geiger's still in this game. He's not going to lose MMR that easy. He's gonna fight back. I like the fire beam from down below. I think that was a very, very good play. The fact that he was able to go straight through there and hit one of the batteries. Awesome. Just awesome. Takes out, uh, or not takes out, but a little bit of damage on the howitzer. Uh, fire everywhere. More gunners. Again, we still have this weak spot here. Leaving these as two by threes does create a weak spot. And we hear activated ability. That means there's going to be a hogwash of weaponry coming out here pretty quick. He's going to get that half-cost firing taken advantage of. Cannon shot goes through there, takes out some mines. And a sniper shot. Whiff. There, another great shot. Looking good. There was half-cast firing here. Uh, oh, because he's down to one core with no turbines. That's the issue I'm seeing here. So that's why he activated the ability. Just gave him the opportunity to fire the cannon shot at least once. Man, I actually, I actually don't know here. He's only got a fire beam. Uh, we've got, or I should say, Eaton's got two fire beams here right now. Gunners being put into place. Sniper being re rebuilt. I mean, Geiger's got the damage here, but I mean, it's not going to take much for these fire beams to to get through to a core. Sniper trying to take out one of the fire beams. We know that if the fire beam is shooting, gets hit in the fire beam with the sniper, the fire beam is eradicated with one shot. Explodes and lights everything on fire. Um, Again, we're just kind of chilling here in limbo. Eight minutes and 50 seconds. Again, more of these weapons. I don't see Geiger adding turbines. He could plop a couple up there maybe. I'm not, I'm not, as a temporary distraction. Uh, he seems not to be too worried about the fire beams. Cannon shot comes in here, almost gets the door snipe on the fire beam. That was a great shot. That was a great shot. That was a great shot. Still not a whole lot going on here. He's still probably fighting with a bit of the resources, trying to figure out the best way to manage it. He does have openings here above his core. Now, this is interesting because there, there is no uh, weaponry up top here that can really hit that cannon. Uh, sorry, the, the core, not the cannon, the core. So he's using the fire beams from down below, but he needs something up here that he can shoot directly through this, uh, through the bracing here and hit the core. Interesting match between these two slugging it out giants. 
Fire beams coming in here. I don't know what that what to expect here. If those fire beams end up taking out the cannons, cannons are gonna blow up, take out each other, and then it's probably gonna break the bracing and the and the core is gonna fall. But if he can get up the energy needed to fire a Howie and two cannons, I'm pretty sure Eaton is toast. I don't think he can withstand that. I mean, he does have... He's still on the five mine economy. Using the fire beams. Uh, sorry, using the wood to to uh, take the bracing. Ah, uh, man, English. Using the wood to space out the fire beam so it doesn't penetrate the cannon. That's what I'm trying to say here. For those of you guys that don't know um, fire beam mechanics, we're going to be releasing a video on it here very soon so that you guys can understand a little bit more how fire beams interact with stuff. Guys are screaming bloody murder over here. Uh, what is that? Clark the cannon and uh, Hernandez the, the howitzer. <laughs> uh, getting ready. Screaming and yelling in pain here with the fire. Uh, we got lots of gunners here. Gary, Gertrude, and, uh, and Guadalupe. And their entourage getting ready with, uh, what, Steve the sniper. And fire beams coming through. Cuts through the wood. Oh, he's got to be hurting on resources. Those cannons blow up. That's that. Oh, doesn't get the door snipe. Good timing on that, though. He fires it right above kind of the fire beam, looking for a door snipe. He misses, but but I'm surprised it didn't just get disintegrated. Great shots coming in there. Man, I'm actually on the edge of my seat right now. I have no idea how this game is going to go. If he, there was a cannon up here, Geiger would be toast because he would just drop a shot right in there and call it Kablooey. Oh, Gotta love it when those cannon shots get taken out of the air. I can see that. You can see Geiger up there spamming in the chat there. OMG. Not surprised. There it goes. Blows it up. Blows it up. And it does break the bracing. Takes out the core. Man, I honestly thought that Geiger had a chance to come back there. If he could get the energy to fire those three weapons, that would have been GG. What a match, you guys. What a match. Eaton versus Geiger. Pinch Fist versus Pinch Fist. Candy